Hi, I'm Tig Newman, Documentation Manager at Looker. This video gives an overview of how to create a connection from Looker to a database. Along the way, we'll show the relevant documentation links to learn more about each topic in the video. Setting up a project involves three main steps. Creating a database connection to access the data, creating and configuring a project to hold our data model, and setting up version control to manage changes to the data model. If you are in a trial, your Looker analyst will handle two of the steps for you, but you'll still need to make your own database connection. Then you're ready to start developing in Looker and deploying your changes to production for your business users to do ad hoc queries, plus view and create looks and dashboards. First, you'll need to get the database contact details like host, database, username, and password from your database administrator. Then come on into Looker's documentation, as the details for each step of creating a connection are in Looker's docs. The docs setup menu covers setting up an instance and connections. This section covers most of the topics for getting, securing, and testing database access. Use the first page in that list to limit access to your data from the network layer. We can use an IP address whitelist to grant access to the database only from Looker-specific IP addresses. Optionally, you can also add SSL encryption. Alternatively, you could create an SSH tunnel to either a tunnel server or the database server itself. This option is the most secure, but is also the most time-consuming to set up. There's some setup to do on your database. To see the instructions you need, go to the Database Configuration Instructions page and click on your database dialect. After you follow those instructions, we're ready to go into Looker to connect to our database. First, we click on Admin. Then we'll scroll down to the Database section and click Connections. The Connections page shows all existing connections. To get started, click New Connection. Then, at the top of the New Connection page, we'll add in details about how to reach our database. First, we're going to pick our database dialect. In the Dialect dropdown, we can see all database dialects that our Looker release supports. Then we'll give our connection a reasonable name. Later, that name will be used in our data model so that we can utilize this new connection. Using the details we got from our database administrator, we specify how to connect to our database. In the next section on the page, we'll add additional details if we want to let Looker write derived tables to our database. Then there are a number of fields where we can specify how we want our connection to behave. Next, we'll specify what time zone was used when storing dates and times in our database data. We can skip the last field because our database doesn't require additional JDBC parameters for our queries. The docs page at the link below provides more information about each of these fields. At the bottom of the page, we'll click Test These Settings to make sure that we've used the right settings for Looker to reach our database. When we've confirmed that the connection works, we'll click Add Connection. Our new connection shows on the Connections page. If you are in a trial, this will be your first connection on that page. Once your database has been connected, it's a good practice to double check that your connection is working properly. In Looker, use the Develop menu to go to the SQL Runner which lets you use a connection to do a variety of tasks, including directly typing and running SQL queries. We'll use the Connection dropdown to select the name of the connection we just created, and then use the Schema dropdown to select the database or schema that we specified for the connection. Then we can see that our tables have been brought into Looker correctly, 
and clicking a table shows us the columns in that table. In this video, we set up and tested our database connection. If you're in a trial, the next two videos in this series can be skipped. Otherwise, if you're setting up your own project, watch the next video in this series, the Creating a Project video.